What is Haleva? You may have seen this written or even heard some speaking it recently. It's a permutation for the word Hallelujah. This word as a frequency was given to my husband just a few weeks ago from someone that does not know the Hebrew language whatsoever. And when it was given, the frequency, the resonance behind it was that of celebration. I am going to share with you exactly why this is a celebration, as from now on I will only use Haliva as a declaration and no longer use Hallelujah. In researching the change of the order within the word, like why the letters were moved and changed in a different order, I found something that profoundly shifted me. The movement at the end of the word Hallel from the original of what we've all known as the Vav Yod He to Yod Vav He, a very slight difference. This changes the form from Hallelujah to Haliva. When the two letters come together in, in the order of Vav Yod, as in Hallelujah, it is a frequency of disdain and disgust. And when the letter He follows it, as it is the frequency of Divine Feminine, the Shekinah, the Shekinah glory of God, we are actually saying that we have disdain and disgust for the Divine Feminine. And we see this in the heavy patriarchal religion of Christianity, which is all about the Father and nothing about the Mother. Even the representation of the Divine Feminine energy was obliterated when the Asherah poles were cut down in the history of King Josiah. Asherah is the Queen of Heaven. Asher, the root of the Queen of Heaven, means the happy, fortunate of God, having the subtle fire within, raised up as sovereigns, finding the way of the straight light, and now have fire, the round wheel, upon their heads. This is the making of the Seraphim. In the bringing forth of this subtle fire as the fifth element, also known as electromagnetism, you've heard me discuss it as negentropy, some call it centropy, this actually becomes the full manifestation of yod He sheen vav He from that of yod He vav He. And you would know this as spoken as Yeshua, as a frequency. Not as a one being returning to save us all, but rather a manifestation of the anointing that comes in the time of need. The frequency of healing, restoration, unification. The second coming is not that of the mind, but of the mind and heart united as one. And this frequency change of all of mankind, Ha'adam, returning to its divine state of being, having unified itself with the mother of all living, then becomes Allah, strong leaders that are divine, who are led through the power of their hearts that reveal the union of the Shekinah fully manifested as absolute authority, divine nation. We will no longer need a government outside of us to govern our minds because the authority will be coming from our heart within. The egoic mind will be lifted off as beheaded and the unified mind and heart will be raised up from the place within, which beats to the drum of unity as one. Not the egoic mind of separation that needs to be governed by a government outside of itself. So what does this mean? Let me share with you that in writings and in symbols, a straight line, especially within the sacred languages, a straight line denotes light and the circle denotes fire. One is the phallus and one is the womb. When the two come together as one, you have phi, 
the golden mean ratio. Masculine energy is light and feminine energy is fire. When united in the sacred wedding as one, you now have the fire of God. The subtle fire, electromagnetism, the mind of Christ and the heart of Magdalene. When we separate ourselves from this energy, when we have disdain and disgust for the divine feminine, then the golden ratio of spiritual alchemy can never take place. So every time we actually say hallelujah, we continue to shame and separate and declare our disgust for the divine feminine, which in turn says that we have disgust for creation as well as ourselves, as it and we are based upon phi, the golden mean ratio. Did you know that phi is the 21st letter of the Greek alphabet? The 21st letter in the Hebrew and Aramaic languages is the letter Sheen, which is also known as the fire of God. We're speaking of electromagnetism. So what is a form of electromagnetism that we would know? Light. What is the law of one? Oreta. The one law. The first three letters of this word Oreta forms the word that we would translate as light. It starts with an Aleph and ends with an Aleph. The universalization of the law that all hangs upon creation. And when we see Tav Aleph at the end of Oreta, it is the guard's chamber, that which is guarded and protected. But it also has another meaning. It is connected to an inner room of the temple, of Solomon's temple, as well as the bridal chamber. We are seeing the manifestation of what some would know in Greek as the Hieros Gamos, when translated is the sacred wedding. We are seeing it manifesting right now. <laughs> that is Haleva. So when we talk about this change of order in regards to Haleva from Hallelujah, what is so significant now with the movement of the Yod to the Vav? Well, when these two letters rearrange themselves and reorder themselves, so the Yod comes before the Vav, it becomes luminous manifestation. And that two-letter combination produces a word, Io. And in several languages, Io either means sun and or the moon. Both of these are a representation of the masculine and feminine energy connected to fire and water. Now as Haliva, we are saying that we have a luminous manifestation of the Shekinah, the divine feminine as God's presence revealed. This means that it can be seen as no longer hidden. This is a really big deal. A little more than a week ago, on 1022 of 2022, that was the day that Venus changed its position from the morning star to the evening star. Lila is a word for night. Chalel is the word for light. By moving to the evening star, Lila is being lifted up. It is now moving into the dark, the divine feminine energy. This is a cleansing of our subconsciousness and removing the wall of separation between the subconscious and the actual consciousness in full manifestation. When Venus was a morning star, the love it radiates, it radiated outward. But when Venus became an evening star, it now is 
the love being radiated and shining within. This very shift helps to evoke feelings of self-love and self-compassion, which will assist and aid in healing and transmuting many shadows. And it will help direct our attention to that which we need rather than what those around us expect. This changes the direction of love light to within instead of without to help us. Help us with the last work that needs to be done in turning those shadows so we can be fully turned, thus unifying Hallel and Lila into one, the sacred union of the twin flames within creating negentropy, centropy, luminous manifestation of the divine feminine no longer hidden, no longer squelched or shamed, but seen and celebrated, the union of the absolute, this is the energy that will be transmuting all shadows, all egregores, the things that are not real, into that which celebrates the union of the light and dark, no longer at war with each other, universalized, self-actualized. Anything that is not, that does not contain both energies, will not be able to continue moving forward they will not be able to stand. When we can embrace this union and fully take in this energy, we will fully turn ourselves back into a golden era once again, harmoniously balanced without war, where love takes center stage. This will be a union like none other, where the celebration of diversity will become the pinnacle of our achievement. We will seek to unite with one another and no longer let separation in any form rule over us. Finally, both energies will be seen for that which they achieve together. A new creation, no longer needing contrast, but rather seeking the beauty and diversity as one from the inside out. The heart will now lead in coherence with the mind. Magdalene and Christ as one. Haleva.